Hi everyone, my name is Milan and I'm very curious if you ever used the aggregate root pattern before. It's very popular in domain-driven design and today I want to discuss the aggregate root pattern, talk a little bit about how we should implement it and what are the benefits of using it. Here we have the entity diagram for the system that we are building, a gathering management system. The two central entities in our system are gathering and member. Gathering is responsible for sending the invitations and also managing the attendees or rather the members that are attending the gathering. The member on the other hand is more of a standalone entity. It isn't really responsible for managing anything else in the system. If we imagine a set of boundaries around our two entities and the other objects that they are responsible for, we come to something like this. You can see that there is a boundary around the gathering entity. It also contains the attendee and the invitation, and the member entity has a boundary containing itself. You can think of these two boundaries as two separate aggregates. Inside of the first aggregate, we have only one entity, the member, and this entity is also the aggregate root. Inside of the second aggregate, we have a few entities, attendee, invitation, and gathering, but this time the gathering is the aggregate root. Aggregates represent a consistency boundary in domain-driven design. You are only ever allowed to read the aggregate as a whole from the database, modify it, and then persist the entire aggregate inside of one operation. If you think in terms of SQL transactions, an aggregate represents a transactional boundary and it always has to be in a consistent state. Let's head on over to the code and see how we would actually implement an aggregate. Here I have the entity base class that we implemented in one of the previous videos. The aggregate concept kind of naturally sits one layer above the entity. So I'm going to create a new class inside of the primitives folder and I will call it aggregate root. This class is also going to be abstract, the same as the entity, and it's going to inherit from entity. So an aggregate root is an entity at the same time. Let's implement the protected constructor. I'm going to get rid of the unused namespaces. This is pretty much all that we need for defining an aggregate root. Let's now make the gathering entity into an aggregate root. We'll just switch entity here with aggregate root. And now our gathering is acting as the aggregate root. It's creating a transaction boundary around the gathering entity and the list of invitations and attendees. Remember that I said that you can only fetch an entire aggregate from a database and not the individual entities falling under this aggregate. But if I go to the invitation repository, you can see that I have this getById method inside of the repository. This allows me to fetch the invitation entity, which falls under the gathering ag aggregate, without actually fetching the entire aggregate. So we can't allow this. So I'm going to remove this method and build the project. You will see that we, we get some build errors. This is inside of the accept invitation command handler. We can no longer fetch the invitation from the repository. The second problem is our accept invitation command. So if I go to the definition, you can see that we only have the invitation ID inside of this class. So the first thing I'm going to do is introduce the gathering ID. And I'm going to go back to the command handler. Now here we are fetching the gathering, but we are specifying the gathering ID coming from the invitation. We have to do this the other way around. We first need to get the aggregate root from the repository. And this is the gathering. So I'm going to pass in the gathering ID coming from the command. If the gathering is null, we return. And now we have to fetch the invitation somehow. Let's move all of this code below the fetching of the aggregate root. So over here. And now the question is, how do we get this invitation? Remember that the gathering contains a list of invitations and we can use this to our advantage to fetch the invitation from that list. So I will say gathering invitations first or default where the ID of the invitation matches the one coming from the command. All right, and let me format this a little bit better. So in this case, if the invitation is null or the invitation status is different from pending, then we return. Everything else in this method remains the same. The only big difference is that we are first fetching our aggregate root 
and then we are using our aggregate root to fetch the entity that we want to modify. Using this approach, we are ensuring that our entire aggregate is fetched from the database as one whole and also modified and persisted to the database as one whole. We are ensuring that our aggregate acts as a transactional boundary of all of the entities that are falling under this aggregate. In the next video, I'm going to show you how we can use the aggregates and the domain events pattern to get rid of some of the logic that we have inside of this method. For example, how we can move the logic for sending the invitation accepted email completely outside of this method while at the same time ensuring that we aren't changing any of the behavior. This was a very brief introduction to the concept of aggregate routes. If you like this video, consider leaving it a like, subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos, and until next time, stay awesome!